it's Friday and we're going to do a craft share from the Wood Cottage Crafts and I I'm pleased to be with you on such a rainy day so hopefully we can do something a bit crafty and uh, cheer everybody up so we're going to make today so you were asked to bring some a uh, uh, scrap fabric and pair of scissors and a crochet hook because what we're going to make is a sort of crocheted basket using the uh, fabric as yarn so I've made this one this took about a, a meter of fabric uh, and put ribbon around it but it's it, it's a nice sort of little basket that you could keep little things in or you could even put um, make a little care package um, and give it to your friends you could put some biscuits in some coffee uh, chocolate bars things like that make a nice little sort of gift of it okay so you can use fabric that you've got or you can recycle uh, something like a pillowcase okay so when you're going to use your pillowcase what you're going to need to do it doesn't really matter I've got a hole in that one uh, you're going to actually sort of cut it all the way down the seams so that you've got a big long you'll be able to rip it um, so that you've got a big long stretch of fabric so your, your first job is going to be making the yarn okay so if I'll show you on this one and I'll show you actually on some uh, new fabric that I've got in the cottage which is very nice this one is actually in, in one of our fabrics as well so what you're going to do is make strips of about a centimeter or a centimeter and a half so you might be able to cut you might be able to rip all the way down so if you can rip all the way down do it carefully because when you get to the other end you do not want to go off the end. Having said that I am going to do it with this one because this is, has got the tag on it and things that I don't want. So when you've got things like the tags and things like that you want to take this off and bin those. Okay and what you would do as well is sort of cut off these seams because they're just going to be too bulky by the time you get them through on your crochet hook okay so you make a little snip about sort of a few centimeters down then carefully if it does start to go off on a funny shape then try using the fabric the other way um, or if you prefer you can, I know some people don't like the sound of it or the feel of the fabric being ripped and just snip that one off you can use scissors um, or if you're being really really wanting to be straight then you could use a rotary cutter but it's, it's not necessary okay let's we'll cut that bit off again so we're, we're getting down to the edge don't know if you can see there do not go all the way down because what you need to do is to then turn it over and make an incision the other way because this is then going to be one big long ball of yarn if you go down you're just going to end up with loads of separate strips so make an incision there and then you can continue and you're going to do this sort of all the way don't worry I am going to do all this because it takes a fair while uh, what we'll do is we'll do some of this and then we can get started and if you've got somebody with you who likes wrapping fabric then they could sort of do it for you because you do use quite a bit of fabric because it makes it quite chunky okay making sure you don't get too close to the end and then you can start there okay so that's I, I would sort of start using that as and, and roll it up as a as a ball okay you can if you really really want to uh, there are ways that you can stretch it and twist it so it does actually make a yarn uh, which reminds me of going to Rydell Folk Museum and when they make rope but you, you, for this purpose we're not going to be able to do that because we haven't got enough time um, so you can do that uh, or indeed you can make it wider if you are making something like a rug um, out of a, say a duvet cover or something like that you might you might rip it into longer wider strips sorry wider strips so this is a, a meter of fabric that I've also got I just love the cherries so you have the selvage edge which is sort of where it comes off the machine so you sort of have the dots on each side and it's a bit like the seams on the pillowcase or whatever you're using 
you, you just need to snip those off. It's just a little bit bulky and then, you know, it makes it harder to go through. So again, I just wanted to show you because this is a little bit um, thinner fabric. And so actually when you're going to rip it, it almost does curl up into yarn because of the pressure you're putting on. Again, be really careful. You don't want to keep joining it. Okay, so can you see how that actually is almost sort of starting to roll in on itself? So it looks like yarn. Okay. As I say, if you find that it, it sort of tears across, it might be that you've, you're on the wrong sort of plane of fabric. You need to just turn it around and see if it'll do it. And if it really won't do it, you'll have to use scissors. All right. So I will let you do some cutting um, and then we'll come back and I'll just start doing how we start the basket. OK, so you should have something like um, a rolled up fabric yarn, something like this. OK, so we're going to start making our basket. So you probably most of you probably know, but I'll just recap. So we're going to start with a slip knot. So a slip knot, I like to sort of uh, describe it as you sort of go anti-clockwise and you make sort of a balloon, okay, on your hand. And then you're going to take your crochet hook, go through the balloon and bring the um, a loop through. Okay, so that's your slip knot, which means you can sort of tighten it up. Okay. Um, with the, the width of it, you can sort of do between about one and a half to two centimetres. If and also with your hook as well. If you've got sort of wider yarn, then a bigger hook is better. Um, and a big hook is quite good because you can sort of see where you're going. It does make sort of slightly bigger holes, but I mean, that's the patterns, isn't it, in uh, in crochets, you know, the, the, the different holes. Okay, so we've done our slip knot, and then we're going to chain two. So with a chain, you literally sort of put the yarn around the hook, Keep hold of that little tail and you're going to pull a loop through. So that's one chain, okay? Yarn around the hook and pull it through and that's another one, okay? So you can see there that you've got your two, your two stitches. I'm also doing it with quite a big um, hook so that you can see what I'm doing. You might want to use a smaller hook. Um, when I was doing the pink gingham one, I've used a smaller a smaller hook so it makes a sort of tighter weave if you like and you've got sort of small holes um, but you do have to be careful not to do it too tight because otherwise obviously it gets more difficult to get the uh, the fabric through so we've chained two and what we're going to do is we're going to go back into this one here into the first one put your hook through and then we're going to put the yarn round not the tail the yarn round and come through both of those and that's we'll go, it's sort of like a slip stitch you might just have to help it a little bit so when you've done that you've sort of made a hole okay so what you're going to do is you're going to do what we call double crochets into this to create your first round if you like so with a double crochet so you're going to go into this first stitch put the yarn around and you pull it through both and that's is oh, slip stitch okay so into this uh, middle part you're going to do some double crochets sorry i'd done two for the purposes of demonstration <laughs> just to say in case you didn't get it the first time so with a double crochet your hook goes into the middle okay because we're doing it into the middle yarn around and you bring it through this first one okay so you now you've got two pieces of yarn on your hook OK, so your yarn goes around the top of the hook again and then for a double crochet, it comes through both of those. All right. So that's going to be the stitch that you're using all the way through this. So you've done one. Let's try and do five more. So bring the loop through, yarn around and through both of those. It's two, three, four. When you get these uh, bits where you've got sort of to the end, don't worry about it too much. Um, just try and sort of pull it through as best you can. Five, six. Okay, 
So that counts as your first round, okay? So you can see the middle there, and then you've got your stitches all the way around the edge, okay? So you could put a little stitch marker or a um, paper clip or a safety pin just so that you know where you started. Now, the next round is going to be, we've got to get bigger. So we're going to use our double crochet again, but what you're going to do is, is two into each stitch. So find sort of your stitch. It's always a little bit harder when it's new. So yarn over, pull it through, and then pull through two. But then you're going to go back into this stitch again. So you're going to do two into each one. So effectively, your um, six stitches are going to turn into 12. And into the next one. Four. And into the next one. Oops. It'd be lovely to see what fabrics you're using. See what everybody's going to create. It'd be lovely. Okay, so just sort of ease it. As I say, it does get a little bit tight on this first round. I'm losing track. Have I done two in that one? Okay, I think this is the last one that I do two double ones in. Oops. So do it along with us. Um, as I say, you can always pause and rewind just to see where we are. Okay. So now you sort of start to see where the, the holes are. Those are going to be what you use in your next round. Okay. So we've done uh, two double crochet in each. Now on this next round, you're going to do one normal double crochet in a stitch and then the, the alternate ones you're going to do two. So this first one, I'm just going to do one. It does grow quite quick as well with it being, you know, very sort of thick fabric. So find your hole, it might be a little bit difficult. Be careful, if you're using a bamboo needle, like I did earlier on today, be careful because if you put too much pressure on the bamboo needle, it will just, uh, the end will just come off. Okay, and that one was the two one, so I'm going to come back with that one. I apologise if it's all a little bit movie, but it's better to see what you're doing, I think, close up when it's crochet. So then we're going into the single one. And then a double one. And basically you can sort of carry on like this. And with each round, you have uh, more sort of single crochets in between. Because obviously you're going to increase the amount of stitches every time you go around. The reason for this is you don't, if you have too many stitches, it makes it sort of um, all wavy and sort of fluted around the edge. And if you uh, make it too tight, then it, it will it will start to curl up. So it's a combination of the two. So you can gauge um, what you need to do. And if you think it, it's looking as though it's going out of shape a bit, then you know you can adjust by sort of adding the double crochets in. Okay. You have to find find the hole. Okay, find the next hole. So you can keep doing that. And as I say, it does grow quite big and you sort of get an effect of if, you've, if you're using pattern fabric, what it's going to look like. Um, it's, it, you know, pattern fabric is good if it looks the same on both sides. So with this uh, cherry, fabric it is sort of you know a good sort of bold pattern on both sides or if you, and indeed if you're using the plain the plain blue 
Okay. You can have um, fabrics that are, are sort of more bold on one side. It'll just sort of give a slightly different pattern. It'll just have little flecks of, of paler as, as, you, as you see the other side. Okay. Right. So if you carry on like that, you will sort of start to see the base of the um, basket start to build up. And it's entirely up to you. So you could, you can sort of see this size, it's not quite big enough for a coaster yet. You could sort of do another round and think, right, well, that's nice. I'm going to put a bit of ribbon round and that can be the coaster. And then you could start again and do a basket. So you could have a matching basket and coaster. Or you can carry on. OK, it's entirely up to you if you just that's just the, the tail bit. If you just remember that as you um, do each new round that like we've gone um, double crochet in the first one, two double crochets in the in the first one. Sorry. In the next row, it was one double crochet, two double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochets. So you're increasing, you're sort of increasing um you know how many stitches it are so it can stretch around so it's nice and flat okay um and then if you went on to the next one then you do two single crochets and then a double crochet and two single crochets and a double crochet and if you went around again it'd be three single double crochets if you know what i mean and then the double one into one stitch so as i say you can sort of alter it and if you do think oh gosh i've made a bit of a mistake it is easy to pull out and it's easy enough to to redo OK, and sometimes you get little sticky out bits, which is where the um, where we went from one line to the next. Don't worry about that. Finish your entire basket and then you might find sometimes, I, you know, you could have a little trim of the bits, obviously not making sure that it's, it's not going to unravel. But you, it, it's a rustic looking basket. That's what it is. OK, so what I want to show you next, that's sort of starting the base, is where you start to come up on the basket. So, in, you know, how to do the stitches to make it come up. All right. So I'm going to move to something a little bit smaller here. This is a, a pink gingham one that uh, I started the other day. So this one started out quite small, really sort of drinks co mug coaster, if you like, mug coaster size. Um, but I decided I wanted a, a sort of little basket. Um, there's a little bit left in there of the silvered. So what you start to do ignore this because I was just sort of starting to practice when you've you finished how big you want to get it in the circle on your next row what you'll start to do instead of going through the holes like that what you're going to do is take the top part of the stitch so the part of the stitch that is nearest to you and you go through that and do your normal double crochet so yarn over bring that through yarn over the knee, uh, hook again and bring it through and you're going to do it onto the next one. Now the reason for, for this is that it starts to then build up um, the sides because you're not going through the middle of the stitch. Okay so you find the edge of the stitch, okay yarn over, is it too close, yarn over again and you're going to continue around. When you've finished the entire sort of diameter of the basket, so you've done a full all the way around, just hoping I've got enough fabric, you'll, you don't do sort of any increasing, you just carry on okay sometimes you might just have to ease it a little bit I just think it's nice to make something that you don't, you know, you can do it from things that you've got at home and it's not just throwing things away. I've recently been trying to sort of um, move things, so moving house and um, the amount of duvet covers and pillowcases that you collect over 20 years is quite substantial. I was <laughs> quite shocked. Um, and it is good to, you know, to give them away to good causes, but then if there's some that you know, it's got a little bit of something on it or it's ripped a bit, then you can still use a lot of it. You know, it just seems a shame to sort of <clears throat> use the landfill for a lot of these things that we can find other uses for, repurpose. Okay, 
So we're coming round to that first stitch again now, that where we started to, to build it up. And you can sort of see where it sort of begins to make the wall, if you like. And do one more. Find the gap. Oops. So double crochet is quite a nice, easier stitch to do. And it's a good beginning stitch as well. You know, if you've got uh, children that want to learn, you know, it's a really nice thing to do to be able to do it. Or even if you've got some fabric, you know, that's special to you or old clothes that are special to you, then, you know, you can do it and make something special and to keep out of it. OK, so we've got round to the uh, where we started here. And what we're going to do is a slip stitch. So a bit like when we did our beginning, when we did our um, double crochets and we, uh, sorry, yeah, we did two double crochets, didn't we? And then we joined it to make the circle. So you're basically doing that. So we want to sort of make the circle complete. So we're just going to do a slip stitch through both of those. OK, that's the, the last one you'll do. Right. From here, you, it's a bit like the bottom, but you're going to be looking for the holes to do it. So now I so say that some of those bits where you've just done the cutting are a little bit tricky. Now you should be getting into your stride a little bit, going into the holes. So this one won't grow quite as fast as the other one because I've got a, a, a smaller hook. But it makes a tighter weave. OK, so you're going into each hole. Oops. And you would keep carrying on. And it's a bit like how, how uh, you know, big you want the base. It's entirely up to you. If you want a little sort of shallow tray, you could sort of do a couple of little ones. Depends what you want it for, really. Um, or you can keep going and, and you know, have a, a tall one. If we, uh, I'm just going to snip that bit off because there's a bit of the selvage. Oh, is that the bottom bit? OK. That's, um with the fabric, you're better using something like a cotton or a polycotton or a thinnish one um, as it sort of it lends itself a little bit more. You can you can manipulate it more, I should say. Uh, when you, I, I was asked about denim, I do have actually some uh, summer lightweight denim, which would work, actually, you know, because it's cotton, but it's just a little bit lighter weight. Um, but it. The, the, th the thicker sort of denim that we have our jeans from might be a little bit tricky. Um, and also, you know, you've got the things of the pockets and things like that. It's, it might be a little bit tricky to sort of cut the fabric. But it's entirely up to you. Or you might have some sort of glittery fabric so you could almost do a, um, you know, put a little glittery row in. add a little bit of detail to it. So now, as I say, don't worry about those bits because they will trim down. We're starting to sort of build the sides. And as I say, we will be able to sort of trim that. But I thought this was a, a pretty, a pretty colour for all those uh, nice pink flowers that we've got in the garden that are getting a lovely feed. OK, so hopefully by now you've sort of got the idea of what we're doing. And so you make your yarn first. And then it's sort of getting started. How big you want the circle, the base of your basket, and then um, just that little bit of building the sides and making sure that it's nice and flat. OK, and the last thing probably that I want to show you before you go off and continue with your own baskets. I would love to see what you do. I really would. It'd be uh, I love seeing what people make. That's the joy of, of showing people and sharing craft. OK, so 
you can carry on like that. The other thing that I just wanted to show you was if you do get a uh, split or and you need to join it, I'm just going to show you for the purposes of this one. So if it does come off and you think, oh gosh, am I going to do a granny knot or something like that? Or even if, you, if you're going with your basket and you want to, uh, you've got to the end and you want to add in a different colour or some glittery, something like that. Just when you get to the end, do the slip knot, the slip stitch, sorry, so that you're going to have a, a complete sort of flat surface to work on. And then you can do uh, your join. So if you've got two ends to join together, just sort of fold each end and just make a little snip. Just a centimetre or so. And what you do is you feed one end through one and then the other end through that one and by magic it joins together okay so you can snip that sort of thing okay um, and then you can carry on so I do hope you've enjoyed um, having the craft share I've really enjoyed sharing it with you uh, and I would as I say love to see what you do as I say that was my sort of interpretation you can if you've got some ribbon in the house you could sort of either feed it through or feed it through the handles with the handles um, I used some a chain stitch so I will just grab hold of my cherry fabric and I will be back with you Okay, so I'm going to imagine that I've uh, I've got much further with this. And then the the other thing I just wanted to show you, obviously, if you just want to finish, you just pull a loop through, and then you can sort of weave the tail uh, in and out, and then just snip it. Same with this, it can just sort of weave in and out, and then uh, snip off the the last part. Um, if you want to make a handle. Uh, that's quite simple it's just sort of a chain stitch so um, depending on the size of your basket or where you want it or you might just want a little tab to hang it up if it's going to be you know got bathroom toiletries in it so one two three four five six on the bigger basket I'd chain ten it just depends the size of your basket you know and really what you want to do it's entirely up to you so normally what I would do is um, chain double the amount and then um, half the amount is the stitches I'm going to jump so I've done six so I'm going to jump three one two three so I'll go into that third one and you can sort of do a double crochet it'll fit over okay and you could do this sort of almost on your last round that you wanted to do so double the amount so on those ones they were 10 and then I skipped five stitches it just depends on the size of the basket and, and what you want it for you might just want something just to to hook it on the wall or on a peg or something uh, if, especially if it's something that's a flat coaster it might be you know a little um pan mat or something like that something you want to keep in the kitchen so you've done i've done six jump three and I, then just carry on and you can sort of see where you're going to come if you want to the other way halfway round put a little marker where you get to and do exactly the same okay and then just join it and then it's it's sort of crocheted in and it is all part of it. So I do hope you have fun. Uh, I'd be really looking forward to, to seeing if, um, you know, what fabrics you've used and what you've created. You could also, as well as doing a coaster, you could uh, not do the handles, but do a circle that's as big um, and do a little lid and do a little uh, chain, chain stitch, little tab for the top. Um, 
there's all sorts of things you can do. It's it's entirely up to your imagination. I'm sure you'll come up with some uh, some fabulous ideas. So I hope you've enjoyed joining me. I've really enjoyed it and uh, hope to see you again on the next craft share. Thank you.